shout it out. We're alive, cause you're alive, and what a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We shout it out. We're alive, cause you're alive. Turn, if you would, this morning to the book of First Samuel. Chapter number 17, 1 Samuel chapter number 17. This is our fourth week on the subject of hold fast, stand your ground, don't allow yourself to get bullied, don't allow yourself to get beat up. Y'all going to help me preach this morning? Amen. Amen. But this is our fourth week and what? What some of you may not have picked up on uh, during this series, and I may share one more, uh, one more message with this title, but what some of you may not have picked up on uh, over the last several weeks is that this sermon series, this title has been my life for, for quite a few weeks right now, quite a few weeks. This has been where I have been. You know, preachers preach about a lot of different subjects, uh, a lot of different scriptures, various things. And then sometimes for the preachers in this room, you know that uh, you end up preaching what's going on in your own world. Brother Linda, you ever done that? You ever preach what's going on in your world? And, and so I have, uh, I've been doing that. I did not intend to preach this this series, but it just happened. God just laid this on my heart, and uh, but it fits so perfectly into what I was dealing with in my own life because I was facing a series of of battles, a series of things that were happening, and I, you know, here again, this has been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I would, I would actually, I would literally have hours upon hours sometime that my heart would pound in my chest, again, for hours and hours. And, and so I, I knew, though, that it was, it was related to some natural things that were taking place that were caused by spiritual things taking place in the heavenlies. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. So here again, spiritual things taking place and and uh, perhaps, I don't know, maybe I, I've been hammering the 12th verse of Ephesians chapter 6 for, for a long time now. And I hope you all have not gotten tired of this, but it's, it's truth. It's what's going on uh, in many lives because I recognize that what I was facing, uh, I knew I wasn't alone, but I was going through the same journey with a lot of other people who, who were under attack of the enemy. And so Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Seems like it sometimes. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. In other words, we sometimes think that our battles are here on planet earth. We think that, well, we're fighting against people or we're fighting against situations. What we need to understand is the battles that we face, those things are often instigated in the heavenlies. Are y'all with me today? But aren't you thankful that Jesus Christ has made a way that we can have victory over every enemy, every situation that ever could come our way? And honestly, I will tell you, there have been times in my life that it was hard to distinguish between the natural and the spiritual battle. It's very difficult sometimes, but the story of David and Goliath is a prime example of what appears to be a natural battle, but upon closer inspection of Scripture and upon closer inspection of what we find out in the story, as we call it, we find out that, that the story of David and Goliath is very, very spiritual in nature. I want to begin in chapter 17, verse 8 this morning. Uh, it says, Then Goliath stood, he stood, this, this picture, if you will, this monster of a man. 
he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul? He says, choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. It's what Goliath said. Now, I need to pause here for a second, and I need to just talk to you for a moment and say that you better watch out because there are some times when the enemy tries to set you up. The enemy will try to set you up for failure or the enemy will try to set you up to, to mess up. The enemy will try to set you up uh, to cause harm. The enemy will try to set you up for various things. If he can sometimes get you to lose your temper or say something stupid, y'all have never done anything like that, I know. But if he can get you, if he can set you up and get you to do something like that, he will use that against you, amen? If he can get you to stray from your God-given path, if he'll get you to stray, if he'll get you to just turn the other way just a little bit, if he'll get you to, to quit what you're doing or pull back from your God-given destiny in life, he's winning. I don't know about anybody in here, but... I don't think the devil ought to win a single battle against me or against you. Amen. Give him praise this morning. But if he can pull you away from that, the use of that talent or that ministry that God has given you, or if he can pull you away from the servant's heart or the gift of helps that he has given you, if he can pull you away from those things. Uh, some, I, I watched somebody just yesterday, as a matter of fact, uh, who had this, actually this was on television, but it was, it was a live thing. I watched someone who was always smiling, always carrying on, then something happened, a trigger took place, a change took place, and all of a sudden this person that used to be smiling all the time was walking around frowning. The enemy seemed to be winning anyway. Amen? Are you winning? You and I need the wisdom and the anointing of God. We need the wisdom and the anointing to be able to function in this life. Don't let people lure you into traps. Anyway, all right, amen? Are y'all with me? I want you to think about Goliath for just a minute. If, if Goliath could have gotten just one person to come out of the armies of Israel and fight him, he would have obliterated them before nightfall. Now, God had a plan with David. We understand that. But, it, but Goliath wanted just somebody, just anybody to come down here and fight. But God had a plan to send David. Amen? I get it. Sometimes it's tempting to jump right in the middle of something, the latest drama. It's tempting to jump with both feet sometimes right in the middle of something. Y'all got to help me preach, amen? If you're going to jump into the middle of something, you better make sure God told you to jump, amen? Verse number nine, Goliath said, if he's able to fight with me and kill me, which he knew in the natural that wasn't going to happen. He said, then we will be your servants, but if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Verse number 11 says, when Saul and all Israel heard these words, of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. But then young David comes along and he's there to check on his brother and bring him some groceries. He'd just been to Walmart for a pickup order. Maybe I, I missed part of that, but David sees this giant. This, as I used the expression, the phrase a while ago, a a monster of a man. David sees him. Uh, it had to be kind of exciting. He gets to talking to the army of Israel about what's going on. And, and uh, I mean, this is a big deal. And then David's oldest brother, we know, gets involved. There's always that one that has to bring a word of negativity. Amen. 1 Samuel 17, verse 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and insolence of, of, heart, of your heart for you have come down to see the battle. You just want to be a spectator. You just want to be 
kind of there to see what's going on. You know, I find it very interesting that David had to fight discouraging words from Goliath. He had to fight discouraging words from his brother. He had to fight discouraging words even from Saul himself. It's interesting. He had to fight all of that before he ever really got a shot at Goliath, the real enemy. Don't lose sight of the real enemy around you. Amen? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Are you all with me this morning? But is there anyone here who has ever had to fight a lot of unnecessary junk before you could really walk into the plan of God? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You had to go through this, this terrible pile of stuff before you could ever get to the real enemy or the real problem. You had to get through those and you had to get to the plan of God in your life. Amen. I will tell you, it is worth the fight. It is worth the battle. It's worth pressing on to where you can see the glory of God on the other side of that battle. Give God praise this morning, if you will. Verse 33, Saul said to David, you're not able, don't you just love an encourager? You're not able to go against this Philistine to fight him, for you're a youth. You're just a kid. You're just a runt. But he's a man of war from the time he was a little bitty tyke. He said, I don't know what the expression was on Saul's face, but I can imagine it being something like this. I appreciate your, your thoughts here, little boy, but, but, you know, we're dealing with giants. We're dealing with battle. We're dealing with real fighting here. This is not, this is not play stuff. Uh-huh. I like that. I want to read it again. He said, you're not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you're a youth. And he a man of war from his youth. David, can't you see how big this guy is? Can't you just look at him? Can't you see how big this guy is? Hold up for just a minute. Can we have a little time out in the service and tell you, don't let anybody ever tell you how big your enemy is compared to how big your God is. Amen? We serve the God of heaven who made mankind out of dirt. We serve the God of heaven who can part the sea with the breath of his nose. We serve the God of heaven who can make water come out of a rock. We serve the God of heaven who can take a sin-stained heart and make it white as snow. Somebody give God praise this morning. Don't let people's words discourage you. Hold fast to what God has given you. Amen. But David spoke up and he said in verse 34, he said to Saul, he said, your servant, your servant used to keep his father's sheep and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, verse 35, I went out after it. He said, I struck it. Here again, I, I don't know the exuberance that was in David's voice and David's tone at this time, but he says, I had delivered the lamb from its mouth, and when it arose against me, I, I don't know if it was like this. Maybe he said, I caught it by the beard, and I struck it, and I killed it. Y'all preach it the way you want to preach it. I, I don't. David was a little shepherd boy, but he knew who his God was. Amen. Let me talk to you about that for just a minute. There are times in most of our lives that we become very happy that we know how to stand upon God's Word. There are times in most of our lives that we become very uh, much at peace because we know how to worship God. We know how to stand in the midst of a battle. We know how to fight. Are you with me? There will be times that we'll be thankful for the helmet of salvation that keeps, almost keeps us to have our sanity and uh, keeps our mind clear. How many of you know sometimes we go through stuff in our lives and our minds get cluttered up? We need a, like a mental bath. I preached on that many years ago. I preached a series. We need a mental bath sometimes in our lives because of things, the stuff that gets in our minds and we think things that are not true. We worry about things that are never going to happen. Amen. Amen. You know, David didn't have back down anywhere in his spiritual vocabulary. 
What he had was some spiritual Holy Ghost backbone. Amen? Verse number 37 says, Moreover, everybody say that with me, moreover. <laughs> you know what that is. That's King James for, let me tell you what else. He said, Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me. I said, he will deliver me. He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. What I want you to see here, here for just a minute is that David would not, he refused to yield his destiny. He refused to give it up. He would not yield his destiny. He was in he was in, as I've shared a couple of times in this series, he was in the place that God had put him. He was in the hour that God had destined for him, and he refused to give it up. Let me tell you, folks, if you're going through life and struggles are coming, challenges are coming your way, don't give up, don't quit, hold fast, stand firm, let God be God in your life. Give God praise again, if you will. Everybody didn't see it just as David did, though. David's oldest brother, we've already talked about it. He felt that David's place, your place, young man, was out there with the sheep. They just go take care of the sheep. That's where you belong. You know, that's your place. You know, you don't even need to be up here with us. But God was saying, I brought that boy to this place. I brought him to this place. God's bringing us. God's bringing you. God's bringing the church to a place where we fight our battles like we should, where we win victory after victory after victory after victory. Amen. God is bringing the church to a place, I believe, here in Arkansas, I believe in the United States. You know, we see all the bad stuff oftentimes on the news, Fox News, CNN, whatever. We see a lot of bad stuff going on. But I'll tell you, in the midst of it all, there is a God in heaven who is working on your, on your behalf. There's a God in heaven who's winning this battle battle that we're in. Give God the biggest praise that you can again. David was standing around a bunch, of a bunch of soldiers that were shaking in their boots. The army, they had yielded their destiny. They had yielded their place. They were afraid. But David was in his place. Amen. David was in his God supplied element for that hour of his life. Don't ever walk away from where God has put you. You say, well, God does this and God puts me here and God, yes, he does. But when you find your place, don't let the enemy pull you out of that. Amen. Give God praise again, if you will. Amen. Never lose sight of the place where God has you that's in your destiny, amen? I just have to believe that there are some people that God has even put right here under the sound of my voice that kind of like Esther are in the place that God put them for such a time as this. Even today, for such a time as this, amen? If God puts you there, no matter what happens, no matter what comes your way, don't let go of it, amen? Don't let go of it. If God puts you in a place, man can never pull you down or the enemy can never pull you down from that place unless you let him. Amen. Amen, somebody. I want to talk about Saul for just a minute. Saul, Saul yielded his authority that day. Saul gave it up and David picked it up. Amen. David stepped up to face Goliath. I'm going to tell you also, there are going to be times that God will put you in a place that everybody else doesn't recognize. Everybody else around you doesn't recognize, but if God puts you there, you hold fast and you stand your ground. Amen? But David shows up and he went down to the brook and he chose for himself five smooth stones. Y'all remember that story from Sunday school? And he puts them in his in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and he starts walking toward the Philistine. David gets a little closer, and we read in verse number 45, says, David said to the Philistine, he said, you come to me with a sword 
and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. When David said that, if you read Scripture, you will find that Goliath stood up and he headed out to meet Goliath. And when he did, David started running toward Goliath and the whole Philistine army. Now, here again, I want you to understand, he wasn't just running against Goliath, he was running uh, toward the entire Philistine army. He's got a slingshot in his hand. I, I can just imagine that. We would read on in verse number 49, but we'd get the picture of whoosh, 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 as he's running and he's, he's coming against this Philistine. And it says there, then David put his hand in his bag and he took out a stone. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. He slung it and he struck the Philistine in the forehead, in the forehead. That was one of the worst rocks I've ever thrown in my entire life. <laughs> he struck the Philistine in the forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead. And Goliath, according to Scripture, fell on his face on the ground. All because David would not give up his destiny. He would not surrender his destiny in life. A few days ago, uh, it was on the day that the storm, the bad storms came through. What day was that, somebody? Wednesday. Uh, it was, thank you, Brother Justin. We had all kinds of sirens going off. On Wednesday of this past week, I pulled into the Parsonage driveway, and, and I got out, and I, I started to walk to my office there on the sidewalk, and I had gone... Uh, probably about eight to ten feet there on the sidewalk. And, and uh, you know, things were changing with the weather, and, and I looked, and, you know, clouds were breaking up just a little bit. And I think even, as I recall, I think the sun was even trying to pop out. And, and uh, I'm walking along, though, and all of a sudden, Sister Carolyn, I heard a voice in my spirit that said, the storm is over. I said, the storm is over. I, I stopped right there where I was at. You know how it is when God speaks something and, and it's just so real and relevant to you and, and uh, it catches your attention? And, and I stopped right there where I was at. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't even remember. I just became just very silent in my spirit, just... Uh, sort of in a time of worship, you know, but very silent at the same time. But I realized God was speaking, the storm is over. He said, the storm is over. The storm is over. That was a word to me that day, and I believe that's a word to some other people. But I, I really believe this. Uh, you know, yes, that was a word for me, but that was a word because the storm had been raging for weeks. I'm just curious, how many of you have had a storm that's been raging for weeks? Can I see your hand? Yeah, you've had a storm that's been raging for weeks. Amen? What's that? Amen, amen. But this may be a word for somebody this morning. Be encouraged for the hour is coming when the battle will be over. The hour is coming when the battle will be over. You have to realize that David pressed on until victory came in his life. He kept on one foot after, putting one foot in front of the other, step by step, thought process by thought process. You know, I've talked to a lot of people just in, in this last week. I've talked with people that have faced death in their family. They have faced addiction. They have faced depression. They have faced fear. They have faced confusion. They have faced unrest. They have faced insecurity in their lives. I've talked with people that have faced a lot of stuff, but the message in every single case, the message of the good news of Jesus Christ in every single case is press on, press on, take another step, get through another day, amen? Amen. amen. It's been years and years ago that someone told me 
And I, I don't recall what I was going through. I really don't recall if I was going through at that, something at that time. But somebody told me this, and they said, you know, if you can make it until midnight, you'll start another day. I've used that so many times in my own personal life as I'm going through things and fighting battles. If I can make it to midnight, I will start another day. Amen? You know, I find it interesting and maybe a little bit humorous. We'll go to verse number 52 in just a second. Maybe a little bit humorous that the armies of Israel, after David does this, after David uh, throws the stone, hits Goliath in the forehead, sinks in his forehead, he hits the ground. Talk about a, um, a busted nose. They'd get one in a hurry right there. But the armies of Israel jump up and they're feeling so very bold at this point. They're feeling so very fierce as soon as David kills the giant. I mean, they're feeling their oats now. Verse number 52, Now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And, they, and the wounded of the Philistines fell along the road to Sherem, even as far as Gath and Ekron. Verse 53, Then the children of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines and they plundered their tents. Now watch this in verse number 54. David took the head of the Philistine. Don't you know that was big? I mean, I, I've just, got nine feet, nine inches tall has probably got a big head. Just thought, throw that in for free this morning. It says, David took the head of the Philistine and brought it I've always pictured it this way. I, I don't know if this is really it, but I always picture you had him by the hair of the head, Brother Lindell. That's just the way I, I'll tell the story the way I want to tell it today. Drug him alone. He brought it to Jerusalem, it says, but he put his armor in his tent. He put his armor. He took the head to Jerusalem, but he put the armor in his tent. David kept something from the battle that reminded him of the victory. Amen? You know, you may find what I'm about to say to be a little bit strange, but there are some things in life that God has blessed me to forget. And there are some things in life that God has blessed me to remember. Some things God has blessed me to forget, but there are other things that God has blessed me to remember to remember the trophy, to remember the victory, to remember how God brought me out, to remember how God saw me through when I was in that valley. By the way, if you're on a mountaintop today, I praise God for it, but don't forget about the people you need to pray for that are in the valley right now. Amen? Amen? And if you're in the valley, go ahead. Reach out to somebody to pray for you. Amen? Amen. But Goliath's armor, there's no way that it ever would have fit David. We understand that. David would never be nine feet, nine inches tall. He would never be this monster of a man. He would never be that big. It would never fit. But Goliath's army would always be a dandy reminder of just how big God is. Of just how big God is. I don't know what you faced in your life. I don't know what you faced last week or this morning, but I will tell you, you ought to be able to look back and see where God brought you from and know that he will do it again in your life. Amen. Give God praise again this morning, if you would. Stand with me today. Exactly 12 o'clock. Boy, we're hitting the nail on the head today. No matter whether you're 8 or 80 in this place today, you know what we're doing? We're all living life. We're all just living life. Uh, I'm not going to ask, but if I was to ask, there would be some that would say, I'm on a mountaintop today, as I mentioned a minute ago. And then there are others that would raise their hand and say, I'm in a valley today. They'd say, preacher, I need prayer. I want to tell you, no matter where you're at, you just need to know that you're in your place, the place that God has given you. Amen. You need to be in the place that God has given you. The Apostle Paul, he wrote in the book of 1 Thessalonians something that a portion of 
this, of this verse I want to share right now. But he said, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Just those words. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Let me tell you, if you believe that, you can make it through anything that comes your way. If you believe, if you're serving Jesus Christ, there is no devil in hell that can destroy your life. As a matter of fact, I'll go so far to say is, I know we all face our share of battles. Sometimes it gets tough. Sometimes it gets brutal. But I will tell you, God will always bring you through. Always. Every single time, Sister Linda. Every single time. Sister Carla, every single time God will bring you through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now next week, we're going to change gears uh, with the same series, I believe. Unless the Lord says do different. But I want to tell you today, I want you to know, before you leave this place, or those of you that are watching online right now, I want you to know that Almighty God is on your side. That may sound like a pat answer of some kind, but Almighty God is on your side and He's going to walk with you. He's going to walk with you. Any, have any of you faced stuff this week? Anybody raise their hand and say, I faced stuff this week? Yeah, faced stuff this week. I will tell you, God was with you. He walks along beside me. Amen. He walks with me and he talks with me. Sometimes down a very rough and rocky road, sometimes down a, a lonely road, but God walks with you every single day of your life. Amen. Father God, thank you for allowing us to come together and to, Lord God, experience your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for doing things uh, through our lives that can only be done by the Spirit of God and by your anointing. God, I give you praise today for your goodness, and I pray, Lord God, for each and every person who is listening right now to my voice. I pray, God, that, Lord, even now, you would bring a word of encouragement, that you would bring for someone today a word of peace, Lord God, we just give you thanks for that in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. We pray, God, as always, that your Holy Spirit would, Lord, move in such a powerful way in individual lives. We thank you for that. With no one looking around, I just want to ask a question before we go. Are you here? And this morning you would say, Pastor, I need forgiveness in my life. I need forgiveness. Can I see your hand right up and right back down? I need forgiveness for something. Thank you, sir. I need forgiveness in my life. Thank you. Anybody else? I need forgiveness. Thank you, sir. See your hand. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? I need forgiveness in my life. I need forgiveness. Only the people that raised your hand, I want you to look at me real quick. Only the people that raised your hand. I want you to know that God is faithful to forgive. This is what the Word says. He is faithful when we come to Him and we ask. He loves us that much that He forgives us. So we're going to come to God right now and we're going to pray. All the church, I want you just to pray with me today. You don't know who raised their hand, who doesn't, who didn't. But you pray in your own way. But today we're going to believe. We're going to believe that God would just transform some lives here today. I wish everybody would just pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father. I come to you right now and I thank you for forgiving my sin. I thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
And Lord, today, I commit to you that I will serve you. I give you praise for all you're doing in my life. Thank you for Jesus. I give you praise in his wonderful name. Amen.